Thanks for joining us today. Our hope is that you're greatly encouraged by today's message and inspired to saturate our city and world with God's heart. There was a, a mom and uh, she had two um, kids, a boy and a girl, and um, they wanted to do something special for Mother's Day. So they um, did the thing of, you know, they made her breakfast and did breakfast in bed. And so um, one of them took different kinds of cereal because they thought, you know, all, the more the merrier and put them in a bowl and put milk on. And, and then uh, the little boy said, I know, I'll make her some coffee. And so he took a cup and he couldn't... Um, you know, turn on the appliance because it wasn't safe. So he made this concoction. He thought, well, if I put like chocolate syrup in water, it'll kind of be the color of, of coffee. And, and so they brought this up to, to mom and, and she's looking at this soggy mixed up cereal and this um, brown liquid. Mommy, mommy, you have to try it. So she takes a sip. It's the nastiest, most disgusting thing she has ever had. And the little boy says, no, 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 you have to keep drinking because there's a surprise in there. <laughs> so she's drinking a little more, and he goes, no, 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 you have to drink the whole thing because when you drink the whole thing, there's a surprise in there. And she, so she's gulping it down as only a mom will do. And lo and behold, but there's two little army men at the bottom of her cup. And she said, why did you put army men in my cup? And he said, Mom, because the best part of waking up is soldiers in your cup. <laughs> I don't know if you got soldiers in your cup today, but I just want to say um, happy Mother's Day. And I also want to... Um, acknowledge that for a lot of us in this place, Mother's Day is, is a painful day. Maybe this year you've, you lost your mother. Or maybe like me, my um, mom has been diagnosed with Alzheimer's and is on hospice care. So it's a, it's a mixed feeling of a day. Or some, you've lost a baby. You've had a miscarriage or um, you've given a baby up for adoption. That's part of your history, part of your story. Some in this place have longed to have a child and have not been able to. And then some part of their journey and their story is there's an abortion in the past. What we want you to know today is that God sees and he loves you. And we want you to know no matter what your journey has been, no matter what your story is, that we love and value you today. And there are women in this place who are not married, have not had children, physical children, but you have spiritual children because of your influence and because of your love. And we just want to acknowledge and honor you today. As you leave today, um, if you're a woman in this place, we just have a little treat for you as you, as you leave today. We just want to acknowledge and say that we love you and value you. Amen? All right. Um, our vision as a church, if you came in the foyer today, it's on the wall, to saturate our city and our world with the heart of God. And we, you saw a video today of a team in Haiti showing God's love. Well, something that has been on um, our hearts is, okay, God, how do we saturate our city in uh, all different ways. And, and there's a ministry that we're um, launching in the fall, and we talked about it at the women's conference, but, but I, it, there's an insert in your bulletin. It's called Embrace Grace. Because our desire is that any young woman in our community that finds herself caught with an unexpected pregnancy, that she would have a place of support and love and care, that we could help her be brave. So can you just uh, take just a moment? We're going to share just a short video about Embrace Grace.
Sometimes the hardest part is going through it alone. Help us save babies and mommies by starting a support group at your church. We're excited to start that in the fall. We're partnering with Essential Pregnancy Services in downtown Bellevue. And if you have questions or say, how can I get involved, um, Aaron, Anthony, and uh, Monica will be at the Info Center so you can find out more um, information. We've uh, been in a series entitled God Is. Because what we believe about God is the most important thing about us. Because it, it defines what we value, what we choose, how we live our lives. And I don't know about you, but I have grown in my, uh, in my heart, in my spirit, just this, this sense of, God, I want to know you, not what I think think you are, but exactly who you are, who you say you are. And, and today is the last in that series, and we're going to talk about this morning, God is always faithful. God is always faithful. Faithful to me is one of those words that, um, that I can't think it's thrown around and used a lot. Um, there are men and women here who serve every single week, and we say they're faithful. And um, if you show up at work every day, people say you're faithful. If you're a dog that kind of hangs around and comes when you're called, you're called faithful. If you are a geyser that shoots up water um, on the average of every 76 minutes for at least the last 148 years, you're called both old and faithful. I think in some ways we've humanized God's nature of his faithfulness and kind of dumbed it down to our standards, our, what we can wrap our brain around. Well, I guess he's always there, so that means, you know, kind of like a dog. They're always there, so they're faithful. God's always there, so I guess he's faithful. Or maybe I've had people express to me over the years, God didn't come through like I wanted him to, so how can he be faithful? Or I've prayed and I prayed and I prayed and I, I was praying about that certain thing and it didn't happen, so how can you say that God is faithful? Or I've heard others say, I served God for years. I've been faithful to him. Why did he allow this thing in my life? I thought he was faithful. Maybe you've had those kind of thoughts or those kind of questions. We're going to unpack the, the word this morning and look and see what does, what does God say about his faithfulness and what does that really mean? Is it just like he's always there? Is that the extent of it? Well, there's more to that. So let's look in uh, Psalm chapter 89. I'm just going to read the first few verses. The psalmist says, I will sing of the Lord's unfailing love forever. Young and old will hear of your faithfulness. Your unfailing love will last forever. Your faithfulness is enduring as the heavens. The Lord said, I have made a covenant with David, my chosen servant. I have sworn this oath to him. I will establish your descendants as kings forever. They will sit on your throne from now until eternity. All heaven will praise your wonders, Lord. Myriads of angels will praise you. Angels are praising him for his faithfulness. For who in all of heaven can compare with you, Lord? What mightiest angel is anything like the Lord? The highest angelic powers stand in awe of God, and he is far more awesome than all who surround his throne. O Lord God of heaven's armies, where is there anyone as mighty as you? You are entirely faithful, entirely faithful. Psalm 33, 4 says, For the word of the Lord is right and true. He is faithful in all he does. All he does. In Deuteronomy 7, 9, Know therefore that the Lord your God is God. He is faithful. He is the faithful God, keeping his covenant of love to a thousand generations of those who love him and keep his commandments. Will you pray with me? Lord, we just open our hearts to you this morning. God, would you just give us a revelation of your faithfulness? Will you show us, God, 
more completely of who you are. God, my prayer is that at the end of this, that your faithfulness would be magnified in our hearts. It'd be made bigger in Jesus' name. Amen. You are entirely faithful, the psalmist says about God. You're entirely, that means completely, totally, everything about you, God, is faithful. And the scriptures declare he is faithful in all that he does. That word faithful means it firm. Like, I don't, I don't know how firm this is, but if this was really, really firm, I could stand on it and it would hold me. It wouldn't shift, it wouldn't move because it's firm. So God's faithfulness is his firmness or he is constant. He doesn't change. You know, God doesn't have a bad day. How many times have you and I said, well, I just didn't get enough sleep last night, or I'm having a bad day, or so I don't normally bite people's heads off, but I did today. I know none of you do that, I, but I've heard of people who are like that. <laughs> you know, or you woke up grumpy, or you let him sleep. <laughs> I know, I know, I'm sorry. God doesn't ever have a bad day. He doesn't ever wake up and he's frustrated or he's angry or he's upset because he's constant. He does not change. That is his nature. He, God is true not only because he's really God in contrast to all that's not God, but because he's constant and faithful in keeping his promises. God is unchangeable in his ethical nature. See, he doesn't change depending on the set of circumstances. Sometimes you and I, depending on the circumstance, we change. God is unchangeable. That is the core of who he is. Everything about him is true. Everything about him is true. There is no falsehood in God. That is who he is. Everything about him is true. We sometimes will go back on our word, like We'll promise the family or friends, let's get together and let's have a picnic. But then it rains, and so you can't keep your word. God always keeps his word. We may be unfaithful because we lose interest. How many of you have ever started a project and not finished it? Yes. God doesn't ever lose interest and change his mind. He doesn't start a project and get bored. He doesn't start that work on you and go, well, that's too hard. That's a whole lot more work than I thought it was going to be. So I'm done. You and I do that, but God never does that. And sometimes we don't follow through because it doesn't suit our interest anymore. Maybe we say, well, yeah, I'll do that. I'll commit to that. I'll... I'll commit to leading a life group, but then life happens and we go, you know, I don't, I don't know that I really want to do that anymore because I got this other stuff over here that I really want to do. Sometimes we're unfaithful because we're selfish, because something doesn't suit us or meet our needs. God is love, so he never acts out of selfishness. He doesn't ever say, I'm not going to do that because there's this thing over here that interests me. God is entirely faithful. He is always true to his word. He does not change his mind. Pastor Campbell, this one's for you. God is not a man that he should lie. See, you and I, we lie. God never lies. Never if he says it is true, God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. Has he said it and will he not do it? Or has he spoken and will he not make it good? See, if God said it, he'll do it. But how many times, and I, it's some of the, my deepest regrets are things I said I would do that I didn't do. And I'm sure if we were to sit here and go, even do the go over yesterday, there were things that you said you were going to do that you didn't do. And you didn't mean to lie, but we end up doing that. But God never lies. 
He doesn't say, I'm going to do something, and then he changes his mind. See, God cannot lie, so we can count on him to do exactly what he promised, to be perfectly reliable, always steady and stable. He's never fickle or vacillating. He doesn't waver. God's not indecisive. That is his faithfulness. His word is infallible. That means there's no errors, and it's unfailing. If God said it, it's true, and it will happen. And it's not dependent on us. God is perfectly reliable, always steady and stable, and never fickle or vacillating. That is his faithfulness. And did you know that the same root word for faithfulness is the same root word for amen? Most of us use amen. It's a punctuation point at the end of a prayer. It's, okay, it's time to eat, right? Or it's time to move on to the next thing. Or sometimes we're in a meeting and somebody prays and we're like, will you just get to the amen already? But it's the same root word as God's faithfulness as the amen. Every time we say amen, what we're declaring is, God, you're faithful. God, you're faithful. What if we began, instead of using the amen as the, okay, we're done with that, let's move on to the next thing, punctuation, if we paused and said, amen, God, you are faithful, and declared over our own lives, over the people's lives that we're with, that God is faithful. God's faithfulness is unlimited. There is no limit to his faithfulness. Psalm 119, verse 89 and 90. Forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven. Your faithfulness endures to all generations. It doesn't matter if you're young or if you're old. God's faithfulness does not change. See, culture changes. How many of you remember before cell phones? I know, it's weird, isn't it? I don't know how many times a day I say, what did I do before I had a cell phone? What did we do? I think we actually wrote stuff down. We actually had to, like, look stuff up in a phone book. I know, it's weird. Doesn't that sound weird? We actually had to call people on a regular phone. And when you look at that and you think, what's life going to look like 20 years from now if Jesus hasn't returned? It's going to be, I mean, I think we're going to have flying cars and... God never changes. See, his faithfulness is the same whether you've lived 80 plus years or you're barely 18. He is the same God. See, it's not like, oh, the saints of old, they had a different God and he was really something then. And, and it's a different time. It's a different, you know, we, they just don't understand. No, he's the same. His faithfulness endures to all generations. See, but what happens to a lot of us is we let our view of people dictate our view of God. We let how people have treated us, our experience of people, bleed over into what we believe about God. See, God's promises, every promise is true, it's trustworthy, and faithful. If he said it, it's true, and it will come to pass. But what happens to a lot of us is people have let us down. People have hurt us. People have disappointed us. People have lied to us. In fact, the very people that were supposed to take care of us, some of us in this place, did the very opposite hurt us, betrayed us. Some of us had a spouse that said, I'm committing my life to you till death do us part. But somewhere along the way, they changed their mind. Or some of you have had parents that, that said, no, 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 we'll always be together. We'll never get divorced. And then that didn't happen. Because of lots of reasons. 
But then what we do is we say, okay, how can God be faithful if these people in my life weren't faithful? Well, I'm here to tell you, God isn't like us. He's higher and better, and his faithfulness is sure. It's true. You don't have to worry that God's going to change his mind about his promises to you because his faithfulness endures. It does not change. And see, if we're leaning and putting all of our weight on his faithfulness, then when people disappoint us, it doesn't wreck us because, oh, that's okay, because my weight wasn't on them. My weight was on the faithfulness of God. That's what I've been leaning on. So when you disappoint me, when I disappoint you, it's all right, because there's a God who's never disappointed me, who's never failed me, who's never let me down, who I can trust. You know, there isn't a person that we can trust like we can trust him. Think of the best person you know, the most godly person you know. They're still down here compared to his faithfulness. Because he doesn't ever have a bad day. He doesn't ever change his mind. He doesn't ever run into an issue and, oh, I'm sorry, I couldn't get to you today. He's always there. He's never let us down. Don't let your hurt from people bleed over into your view of God. He is faithful. You and I break promises, but God never breaks a promise. He told Adam and Sarah, he said, you're going to be parents. In fact, you're uh, Abraham. Did I say Adam? I meant Abraham. <clears throat> In fact, Abraham, you're going to be the father of many nations. He promised that. He did it. It probably didn't happen how they thought that it would and as fast as they thought it would, but it happened. He told the children of Israel when they were wandering in the desert, he said, I'll feed you. I'll take care of you. In fact, your, your clothes aren't going to wear out for 40 years. God said it. He did it. He told the widow of Zarephath, he said, if you'll feed the prophet, I'll provide food. She didn't have anything. God did it. He told Noah, you take your family in this ark and I'll protect you and I keep you. He told them, he told Noah that, he did that. When God told Moses, just go, I'll deliver my people, he did that. If God said it, it's true. Okay, fast forward to the New Testament. Jesus said, lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. And then he told the early church, he said, I want you to go to, before, I'm going to go but I want you to go to this room, this upper room, and I want you to wait because the Father's promised to send the Holy Spirit. So don't leave there until that happens. Jesus said it, and it happened. See, if God says it, it's not only going to happen, it's true. You can count on it. You can go to the bank. You can trust in it. That is his faithfulness. I want to look at just four um, aspects are four ways that he is faithful. First one of this, God is entirely faithful to give us strength. 1 Corinthians 1, 8 and 9 says, he will keep you strong to the end so that you will be free from all blame on the day when our Lord Jesus Christ returns. God will do this for he is faithful to do what he says. And he has invited you into partnership with his son, Jesus Christ our Lord. He will keep you strong to the end because he's faithful to do what he said. Our confidence, my confidence, your confidence, cannot be in our own strength and ability. Because our, only, our own strength and our ability only goes so far. People say to me all the time, oh, you're so strong. No, I'm not. I'm weak, but he's strong. And he promises to keep us strong to the end. That means till that day when Jesus returns or we take our last breath, God says, if you'll let me, I'll be your strength so that you can do what you cannot do. You can serve me even when it's difficult. Do you ever feel like you want to quit? You ever feel like giving up? You ever feel like 
this is too hard. God's faithful to give you and I strength. In fact, do you know that his strength works really good when we're weak? His strength is made perfect in our weakness. You know why? Because when you and I are weak, we're not relying on our own strength. We're relying on him. And then his strength is made big and strong. So if you feel weak here today, can I tell you that he promises he will be your strength. He will give you strength. God, second one, God is entirely faithful to provide for our victory. To provide for our victory. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. The temptations in your life are no different than from what others experience. And God is faithful. He will not allow the temptation to be more than you can stand or more than you can bear. When you are tempted, he will show you a way out so that you can endure. Has anybody here ever been tempted? Yeah. How many times so far today? And that word temptation, it doesn't just mean a temptation to sin. It also means a trial or a hardship or a difficult season. But God says God is faithful with some temptations, with every single temptation, he provides. He provides a way of escape because he won't allow you to have more than you can bear. Now, I hear people quote that part a lot. Well, God won't give you more than you can handle. Actually, life will give you a lot more than you can handle because God didn't fashion you and I to handle life on our own. See, his faithfulness is, one, he'll give you strength, and two, when you're faced with temptation, he gives a way of escape. Now, that, that word picture of that way of escape, it was like a, when an army was, was in a battle, there was a narrow mountain pass that would be provided, and that was their escape. Now, what happens to you and I a lot of times is we bypass that way of escape. We sit here still in this, in this valley, in this battle, and we think, oh, I got it, I'm strong enough, I can do this. And before we know it, we've fallen because he provided this way of escape and we didn't take it. Because he's faithful. He will always, every single time, whatever temptations in your life, he'll provide a way out. And sometimes that way out is going the opposite direction. Sometimes, I don't know about for you, for you, but for me, sometimes that way out is just shutting my mouth. God says, if you'll do it, if you'll take the way of escape, I'll give you victory over this area of your life. That thing that you've been battling against, he said, I'll do it because he's faithful. He doesn't say, well, I'll do it for the really like, as long as you pray every day for the next two weeks, then I'll do it. As long as you're really spiritual, then I'll do it. No, he said, I am faithful and I'll provide a way out, a way of escape to give you victory in those areas that you struggle with. And he never fails to keep his word. Third one, God is entirely faithful to forgive our sins. To forgive our sins. 1 John 1, 9. But if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful. And he's faithful to do what? To forgive us and to cleanse us from all wickedness. Do you know God's forgiveness is not based on how we feel. God says, if you confess to me, I'm faithful and I'll forgive. But God, I don't feel forgiven. Last time I checked, God's faithfulness was not dependent on how we felt about it. Because long before you and I were born, God established his faithfulness because that's who he is. And he cannot deny himself. That is who he is. 
Well, I, did, I don't know if I said it all right. I was sorry. I asked for forgiveness, but, but maybe I, did, I don't pray as well. I don't use all the right words. Do you know God <laughs> looks on the heart, and he is faithful to forgive, and he doesn't remember it anymore. The problem is we remember it. See, you and I struggle with feeling forgiven because we know what we've done, Other people may remind us, situations may remind us, our own thoughts remind us. So you and I have a choice. I can either agree with how I feel, or I can agree with God's faithfulness. See, if I'm walking in agreement with how I feel, well, I don't feel forgiven. I don't, I don't deserve to be forgiven. I, I don't know how can God ever forgive this. Then I'm agreeing with the enemy of my soul. But you and I have a choice because forgiveness is not a feeling. It's a fact. It's a fact that God established that if we confess to him, he is faithful to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. God is entirely faithful to forgive. The last one is this. God is entirely faithful to sustain us through suffering. 1 Peter 4.19 says, Therefore, let those who suffer according to the will of God and trust their souls to a faithful creator in doing what is right. Worship team, you can come to the platform. Chaley, you can come. Therefore, let those who suffer according to the will of God entrust their souls to a faithful creator in doing what is right. See, when you and I suffer, we think, I don't deserve this. I can't believe God allowed this to happen to me. And we can begin to believe that somehow God's forgotten us. See that word faithful. When our father... was writing the story of who he is. That word faithful, the word picture, is of a mother or father holding a baby. That's the picture that God wanted us to have of what his faithfulness is like. So when that verse in 1 Peter says, entrust our souls to the creator, that when we hurt, when we suffer, when we don't understand, he says, I'm still faithful, I still got you. I'm still holding. If you'll entrust your soul to me. See, when we entrust our soul to him, he's got us. And he's not going to, because he's faithful. His faithfulness is firm. He's supporting us. He's not letting go. Even when we're messy, even when we cry, even when we're angry and we flail about, even when we're mad and we ball up our fists and we say, God, how could you? He says, it's okay, I got you. And you know what I think he does? I think he walks around heaven. Just go with me here. And says to the angels, come here. Come here, I want to show you something. I want to show you. Look, this is my son. Isn't he magnificent? See, he is entrusted his soul to me. He's walking through a difficult time, but he's entrusted his soul to my faithfulness. Look, look, look at my daughter. Isn't she amazing? You know, she's, she's struggling, and at times she feels afraid and alone, but, but she's entrusted her soul 
to my faithfulness. Isn't, isn't she something? I'm her father and I love her and I'm gonna care for her because she's entrusted her soul to my faithfulness. See, 2 Timothy 2 verses 13 says, if we are unfaithful, he remains faithful. Now, I don't know about you, but I've looked at that verse and thought, oh man, I blow it all the time. I, I'm, not, I'm not as faithful as I want to be. And I don't think that's what he meant because that word faithful, that picture, it's when I don't know what to do, when I don't know how to do it, when life doesn't make sense, even when we don't understand, he is faithful. See, we put the emphasis on our unfaithfulness, our childlikeness, our crying, our mess we make. We put the emphasis there and we read that verse and we think, yeah, that's right, God, I have failed so many times in my faithfulness. He goes, no, you got it wrong. See, when you're faithless, I'm still faithful. And you can entrust your very soul to my care because I've got you. Even when you have no idea what to do next, I've got you and I'll take care of you and I'll carry you through because see, I'm firm. I'm not gonna let you go. I'm not gonna drop you. I'm gonna support you every step of the way. See, I knew I'd get to hold Vivian somehow. She is so precious. Thank you, Chaley. I believe some of us have struggled. Maybe we've never said it out loud, but we said in our heart, God, where are you? Where are you? I want you to have that picture in your head that all along, if you've entrusted your soul to him, he's still got you. He's carrying you because he's faithful and he does not change. And he does not change based on our circumstances or our understanding of those circumstances. Because he is faithful. He's firm and secure and he keeps his word. Would you bow your heads with me this morning? I know that there's some of us in this place who we've never really entrusted our soul to him. We're kind of living life on our own terms, on our own plan. And we've never said, God, I, I put my life in your hands. I entrust my soul to your care. I want to Ask Jesus to come into my life, be the Lord of my life, wash me, make me a brand new person on the inside. I want to know that I'm forgiven of all those things I've done. In just a moment, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand if that's you. Say, I have not or I am not now entrusting my soul to God. And I want to give you a chance before you go on about your day to make that choice and that decision to place yourself in his care, to make things right between you and God. Because I believe he is extending his hand towards you this morning because he loves you, because he's faithful, and he wants you to know that he sees you. So if you're in this place and you say, I've never entrusted my soul to him, but I want to do that this morning. I'm going to count to three. It's really simple. And then I, just between you and God, everybody's heads bowed, eyes closed. I just want you to raise your hand and say, God, that's, that's me. And today, I want to entrust my soul to your care. God, I want to trust you with my whole life. Maybe you did it a long time ago, but today's a brand new day. One, two, three. All over this place, raise your hand. Say, I want to entrust my soul to Jesus. Amen. Amen. Would you stand with me this morning?
those of you who raise their hand, our, our prayer team will be here and I'll be here and I'd love to pray with you that you could make that step of entrusting your soul to him. Father, we thank you for your word this morning. God, may we as, as men and women in this place walk from here different because your faithfulness has been magnified in our hearts. God, that, that even when we pray this afternoon or, or over a meal, that every time we say amen, we would be reminded, God, that you are faithful that you can be trusted. God, would you do that in our hearts, that we might lean all of who we are on all of you. We bless you and we thank you. In Jesus' name.